here. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the signed agenda and regular meeting of the Monroe Township Council on this Wednesday, September 4th, 2024. The meeting is called to order. Would everyone please rise to honor our flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Will the clerk call the roll, please? Councilman Charles DePiro. Councilman Michael Markell. Here. Councilwoman Rupa P. Siegel. Here. Council Vice President Terrence Van Zora. Here. Council President Miriam Cohen. Here. Would you please read the Sunshine Law into the record? In accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, it is hereby announced and shall be entered into the minutes of this meeting that adequate notice has been provided by the following. One, posted on the bulletin board within the municipal building on December 29, 2023, and remains posted at that location for public inspection. Two, printed in the Home News Tribune and the Cranberry Press on December 29, 2023. Three, posted on the Monroe Township website. And four, sent to those individuals who have requested personal notice. In accordance with Chapter 3, Section 17 of the Monroe Township Code, public comment shall be limited to five minutes unless further time is granted by the Council President. Thank you. Item five on our agenda, presentations and proclamations. Uh, Mr. Mayor, you are doing the honor of presenting the Township of Monroe Senior Center Month, September 2024. Good evening, everyone. So our first time first time ever that we are officially recognizing you now we always shall remember our first time correct um, way too long way too well I said some of some of you got it it's, it's okay it's, it's it's after 630 we can go a little uh, you know um, having you all here truly is to me, a culmination, but it's it's ongoing. Okay, this is just not get together and give you a plaque and get a picture and pat you on the back and 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 say, hey, nice job. Um, and it's a shame that it's this is taken this long to get you all together like that. So you know, you can always say, ah, you know, they like us, they know what you know, they know what we do. But having you come together at a council meeting to be awarded this proclamation, uh, it's kind of nice. It's kind of nice. And we do notice, we do notice how important you all are to the township and the citizens and the service that you provide. We always talk about crown jewels and buildings and the brick and the mortar and, and golly, it's uh, the, the senior center is truly one of the best looking buildings. Though this Pizza Hut building is maybe not good to compare it with, but truly, you know, you know, we always talk about the buildings, but we all know, and I know all of the council members up here as well, we always talk about the people working and providing that service. And we have noticed and, and, it, and it's again, the culmination might be this, but it's that notice that we see day to day when we do go to events. And I've attended my share of events at the Senior Center. And I, I, you know, from afar, I just love seeing that interaction. Um, going back to when it was COVID times and the phone calls that you were receiving, the phone calls that you all made. And if, you know, even if it was just, a, just to listen to somebody during that time, the wealth that that provided, the wellness, the service that that provided, um, all of the programming, all of the trips, um, dancing, you know, during a concert, dancing off to the side, grabbing somebody and bringing them up and just dancing with them. It's noticed, my friends, 
And when you see that, I long for that. This is how, how I would want to be treated. And to see you act in such a way with the citizens of Monroe, it's moving and we see it. And tonight is that small culmination just to say thank you so very, very much for what you do. We are so proud of you and proud that we have such wonderful workers in our town. Uh, with, with that being said, there is a proclamation here with a lot of words. Um, I'll read the first and the second paragraph. Um, it's a proclamation, Township of Monroe Senior Center Month, September 2024. Whereas the National Senior Center Month originated as National Senior Center Week in May of 1979, and was proclaimed by President Ronald Reagan in 1985 and was extended to a full month in September of 2007, so on and so on. But let's go to the last. Whereas the Monroe Township Senior Center provides service to over 8,700 Monroe senior residents and provides countless programming and support that enables our residents to continue their involvement with the contribution to the larger community. Now, therefore, be it resolved, I, Stephen Delina, the proud mayor of Monroe Township, do hereby proclaim the month of September as Senior Center Month and further extend appreciation to our director, Nancy Harrigan, and her entire staff for the vital services they perform and their exemplary dedication to the community they represent, dated September 1st. Signed, Stephen Delina. Thank you so very, very much. Thank you. Do I have uh, them speak and then we'll present that? What's that? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm learning how to use a new microphone. This is not a skill I obtain easily. And then they changed microphones on me and I could get so being staring at it. I'm watching the red light go on and off. It has been my pleasure and privilege to spend many hours of time at the Senior Center, sometimes as a participant in an activity when you were having tap dancing there. And I understand that might be back. And sometimes when I have students there who are taking blood pressures and counseling our attendees. And sometimes when I'm just at a program and there is a uniform atmosphere of warmth friendship and caring and you wouldn't know that over 8,000 people use the facility because no one acts like they're harried and they're racing and they can't get these things done it's a tribute to your leadership and it is a tribute to each of you who work there that you place the needs of the people who live in our community in the forefront and we are very grateful. I am assuming, do I have colleagues who wish to say something? Yes, I'm watching Ruben nod her head at me right away. Yes. Thank you, Council President. So congratulations to all of you. The Senior Center is such a wonderful place. When I, before I came onto the Council, or maybe right when I did, um, Councilwoman Schneider was probably your biggest advocate. Every time she saw me, let me take you to the senior center with me. Let me show you around. And I did. I took a tour with her. And she pointed out all different things. And here's the programs. And here's this. And here's that. So that's the first time I really had an opportunity to come into the building and learn about all the programs and services that you offer day in, day out, and how you connect and help See our senior 55 and overs all connect with each other and I saw that too when I went to my first Thanksgiving event at the senior center and as you walk around the tables you hear the stories and you learn about the people but you also learn how they took classes together at the senior center and how they built their relationships and their table today or that day was friends that they met at the senior center so I thank you all for everything you do day in and day out taking care of our community thank you Uh, um, thank you, Madam President. You know you guys are special. You're like the first guys I know that have gotten a presentation when you're not retiring or anything. <laughs> so you actually get to hang out and enjoy it and bask in the glory a little bit. And uh, 
it, and it is well deserved you know I, I don't get there as much as I would like I'm usually running around with work and stuff but every time I go there it's the same thing you always get treated with respect I hear nothing but great things from our uh, our citizens that'll you know sometimes when we're out campaigning whatever it might be they come up to you and they'll they'll mention it and and as we always refer to it uh, you know when when we talk to other towns it's one of the real crown jewels of our county and we're very proud of it we're proud and as I used to well, even when I was campaigning and I was talking I said it's not just the building itself it's the people that work there so thank you for all that you do and many many more years before you have to come back again <laughs> thank you works um, I'm honored to uh, be on the uh, Commission for Aging so I meet with uh, the staff one, every once in a while um, when I get old enough to use the Senior Center I'll uh, why is everybody laughing I don't understand that um, but uh, hopefully you guys will get a little busy this year because uh, in the past I know you're slacking off but uh, no all kidding aside um, when people ask me where do I live I say Monroe they say well should I move there and I said they're all old people so I said because they're my friends um, I said yeah we have the best senior center in in New Jersey maybe in the United States really um, you're getting all this praise you don't need it because you are the best and uh, I want to I thank you for all the hard work you guys do you deserve this and uh, deserve more Where's to show me the money? I got it. <laughs> right? Thank you guys. For, thank you guys very much. I just want to say thank you for everything you guys do. And an example of teamwork is sitting right in front of us. And every time I've ever went in the building, it's nothing but compliments that we've always received from our residents. And absolutely, you guys do an exceptional job from transportation to all the programs, tax, your tax preparations, and everything you do for our community. It's like, you, you're like our, you're the Yankees of Monroe Township, and I know there's a few Ranger fans that, that are out there, so I definitely want to say the Rangers as well. Um, but I just want to say teamwork, it's definitely right in front of us. And I, from the director all the way down to every single person that works there, janitors, Every custodians, everybody does a phenomenal job, and we've heard nothing but compliments. And we can only do the, the, our job because you guys do an exceptional job at what you guys do, and we're here to support you. And thank you very much, folks. Going, to, we're going to. You have some pictures taking. Anyone wants to take a picture? We can take a five-minute recess if you need to do that. Yes, Mr. Warmer. Yes. Kyle, are you getting a picture for us? Okay, good. Motion for a recess, sorry. Oh, look at that. Uh, this is Balance Awareness Week, September 15th through the 21st. Childhood Cancer Awareness Month is all of September, and Sepsis Awareness Month is also in September. So if you notice, there are a number of signs around childhood cancer awareness in front and on the side of the building. We can move to item six, which are the ordinances for second reading. Will the clerk please read? Ordinance, Ordinance 08, 2024, 015. Ordinance amending chapter 39 of the code of the township of Monroe entitled fees. Ordinance 08, 2024, 016. Ordinance amending the code of the Township of Monroe, section 108-5.27, entitled Stormwater Management. Ordinance 08-2024-017. Ordinance of the Township of Monroe, County of Middlesex and State of New Jersey, establishing a mid-block crosswalk on Applegarth Road, County Road 619, Township of Monroe, County of Middlesex, State of New Jersey. Ordinance 08-2024-018. Ordinance amending Chapter 35 of the Code of the Township of Monroe entitled Drug-Free Zones. Ordinance 08-2024-019. Bond Ordinance providing for 
facility improvements on township open space property in and by the township of Monroe in the county of Middlesex, New Jersey, appropriating $2,925,000, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $1,397,600 bonds or notes of the township to finance part of the cost thereof. Ordinance 08-2024-020. Bond ordinance providing for various improvements to the water sewer utility in and by the Township of Monroe in the County of Middlesex, New Jersey, appropriating $4,995,000, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $4,995,000 bonds or notes of the Township to finance part of the cost thereof. Ordinance 08 2024 021. Bond ordinance providing for various capital improvements in and by the Township of Monroe in the County of Middlesex, New Jersey, appropriating $4,224,400, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $3,523,300 bonds or notes of the Township to finance part of the cost thereof. Ordinance 08-2024-022, an ordinance authorizing the Township of Monroe to acquire a right-of-way dedication over property at 45 Lower Machaponics Road, known as Block 68, Lot 41.29, a 10-foot wide street tree easement at 43, 45, and 47 Lower Machaponics Road, known as Block 68, Lots 41.34, 41.35, 41.36, and a conservation easement at 43, 45, and 47 Lower Machaponics Road, known as Block 68, lots 41.34, 41.35, 41.36 on the Township of Monroe tax map. Ordinance 08-2024-023, an ordinance authorizing the Township of Monroe to acquire a 10-foot wide tree wide tree easement at 38 Avenue I and 40 Avenue I, known as Block 123, lots 11.01 and 14.01 on the Township of Monroe tax map. Thank you. Will the Council please note we have resolutions for consideration under the consent agenda at the September 4th meeting, R92024-196 through R92024-216. Are there any resolutions requested that we remove them from the consent agenda? Yes, please. Thank you, Council President. The ones that, that I need uh, requesting are R9-2024-211, R9-2024-212, R9-2024-214. 2-1-4. Yes, that's it. Thank you. You're welcome. Item 9, we move to the public comment section. Please note that it is limited to agenda items only, five minutes per speaker. May I have a motion to open public comments? Motion. Thank you. May I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Anyone wishing to address the council? Please come forward. Your name and address for our records, please. Good evening, council members. Gary Busman, 7 Monarch Road. Uh, R2024206. Maintenance bond at Stonebridge. Uh, can you indicate how much that release is for? Sure. And also, if there are any more still outstanding. Mr. Weinberg? I believe it's for $2,900, um, uh -huh. the, the bond, but I will defer to Mark, who would probably be able to answer the other question. Thank you. The maintenance bond amount was uh, $2,991 that's being released. Thank you. Thank you. One more question, please. Uh, 2024 210. Uh, this is all regarding wording. Uh, I read the words, I'm not sure what the words actually mean. Uh, I'm familiar with what used to be in this state uh, with uh, user fees placed upon uh, builders that were very beneficial to all the muni municipalities throughout the state. I believe it is a uh, major important item for all the municipalities in the state to continue. 
The builders have too large of a lobby within the state. Uh, they control uh, all of the building permits, all of the uh, functioning that goes on within the state, and therefore the municipalities end up on the short end of things. It used to be days when builders would build schools, they would build parks, they would build roads. That doesn't exist anymore under changes within the law. So what I'm getting at is, even I approve of all this, I wish it would really go forward, but um, how do we, you know, what is it exactly that uh, you, Mr. Mayor, are going to put forward, and do you have the support of various other municipalities? Please, sir. Madam Council President, in regards to that particular resolution, obviously, um, we, we did attempt something very similar to this a couple of years ago to the League of Municipalities. Um, it went to the League at the time and just kind of rustled around a wee bit with, uh, with, with no traction. Um, I have spoken to some other mayors, uh, some other um, uh, county officials as well throughout the state. And, um, you know, again, the, the rumblings are there to let's try it again. So this is, this is us giving us an, another shot. Sure. Um, right now, it's piecemeal, uh, a couple here, a couple there. Um, but for us, you know, Confucius had said that the longest journey starts with a single step. So this is, this is a step that I want to take. Uh, in regards to that, obviously in support of the, uh, the Board of Education as well, has put out a resolution. So if we can get some traction going with it, through the league, uh, through our uh, state representatives, this is, this, is a, this is the time. It's time. How do we find out when something like this will be heard uh, in either the Assembly or the uh, Senate? I'd be very interested to know. I'd like to attend one of those meetings if they're Madam available Council President, and open to the public. Madam Council President, if I can answer, um, you'll, you'll you'll hear about it when we hear about it when That's it goes to the, it. if it, if it goes if there's if there is a bill. Thank you. One more item. Yes, may I? You're not out of time. Sure. Okay. O eight two o two four o two o. Am I? Yeah, I'm correct. With no, yeah, that's one of your ordinances. There, uh, at the last uh, five letters, words in that uh, posting say part of the cost thereof. Well, if it's 4.995 and we're asking for 4.995, does that mean that's in its entirety or there are more costs than there since it reads part of the cost thereof, which indicates there's more? Can I get an answer to that question? No, if you look at it, you'll, you'll see that the, it authorizes $3.5 million in bonds to authorize the it's cost. Not what of I'm reading. 4.995 and 4.995. Which is, yeah, I have the wrong one. Which 020. Right here. 4,000. It's all words. What do the words actually mean? Part of. Part of means it's not the whole bond and it's not the entire cost. Those are utility bonds, so Alan, I don't think yeah, there's there no down payment there. So. Right, it is a self-liquidating authority. Right. So I think that may be the standard bond language that's mm -hmm. in most resolutions. But it's and incorrect. In case, but I'm I don't care if it's, excuse me for interrupting, but, but the words seem to, at least to me, part thereof means it's not entire. So something ought to be done to change that, even if it's standard procedure, we ought to be above standard procedure and do it so that people understand what it actually means. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I, I want to answer the question. Council. I'm not bond council. Not bond council. Um, that's who writes these resolutions, the people who specifically do bond ordinances. I'm certainly happy to check with him. I know it's Please. on second reading. Um, so it's a little more complicated than if it was on first reading. Um, but this is how bond council prepared it, who's generally the expert in this area. And if there's something insufficient about it, we would run it again, but yeah, I'll certainly well, check with him. Yeah, well, if you think that I'm wrong with the understanding, I'm happy that I brought that to everyone's attention. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Anyone else wishing to address us, please come forward. Remember to please state your name and address for our records, Dr. Perot. Good evening, Council, Mayor, Mayor, Council, President, and all. 
I have um, R9202410. Thank you, Mayor, again, raising this question on impact fees on the builders towards the schools. Uh, we have done that 10 years back, several years back. Again, uh, we are here to go to Trenton when necessary. We are here to support this whenever it is required. So wherever we have to go and speak or lobby, we are here, okay? Um, that is the request from the public. The, um, I have several questions, uh, President. Uh, I will speak about that, then I will, then I will stop to hear from you all the answer. Resolution R9202401 calls for $48,000 contract with AT&T for wireless telecommunication equipment. The question is, this is a payment per year. This will cover all the township municipal buildings, municipality, library, fire district, schools, so forth. Uh, second one, R9202402, painting water tank of on Applegarth Road. The first bid was around uh, 1.928 million. That bid was withdrawn, and the next bid is 2.935 million is approved. The difference is 1 million. How many uh, bids came, and this rate is common in the market in New Jersey. Then again, I see R9202205, R3M Engineering again is providing service for the same tank for painting and other work, again, 244,000. So, so the total cost of painting this tank and maintenance, whatever it is, is going to about 3.2 million. So the question is, this is the rate going on in the market because I saw, I went and Google, I saw about 10 years back, the cost was 1.3 million uh, for similar. I don't know, I cannot compare what the tank size is. Now it is going to be 3.2 million and odd. And is, are we getting any aid from the county or state, or it is all our money? Thank you. Welcome. Sure. Mr. Weinberg, would you want Mr. Stroin to? Yeah, I'm going to have, uh, if everybody can hear me, I can have uh, Mr. Stroin answer uh, 202 and 205. Please. I'll just answer briefly on 201 before Mr. Stroin comes up. That is, and, uh, and this is run through the utility department, so Joe may want to comment on it as well. Um, that is a monopole on the other side of the turnpike. Okay. It's, so it's one single pole. It's not a giant antenna. Um, it's on a Beale Road, which sort of sits behind the hotel that sits on Forsgate Drive, so it's back right on the edge of the turnpike. And so that would get the, and the, and the money goes to the utility department because it's their property, and that would be the $48,000 a year with a 3% increase every year for five years and then three five-year renewals. Um, so that's, that's what that would be for, and the benefit would go to the uh, rate payers and the, you know, the utility itself. Um, in terms of 202, I'll let uh, Joe talk a little bit about um, the bidding process, the five bidders for that, um, and what's entailed in the project. Uh, for this large uh, 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 tank that sits at uh, Applegarth Road in Joan Warnway. Good, it's on. Uh, excellent question, Dr. Parab. Uh, we received five bids for this tank. It's one of the largest tanks in the state. There's only two tanks in the entire state that are 3.2 million gallons. It's a 3.2 million gallon hydro pillar. Uh, the first bidder that was the uh, low bidder uh, at 1.9 million withdrew his bid because he did not understand the specification correctly okay. uh, and could not complete the job as it was specified. Uh, the engineer's estimate for the painting of the tank both inside and outside as well as doing improvements in the tank. This is the original construction made by Chicago Bridge and Iron back in 2005. So uh, the usual period of time before you have to paint the tank is usually about 15 years. So we've exceeded that 
and uh, the tank is in good condition, but we want to maintain that asset. Uh, the engineer's estimate was $3.2 million. So we're actually under the engineer's estimate, including the construction administration, which is 248000 Now, you know, uh, uh, or, or might not know, the going rate for construction administration is usually between 10 and 15 percent of the actual project cost. So this is actually, for construction administration, 8 percent. So we're in underneath that, uh, that industry standard as well. So we're very satisfied with this bid. Uh, this particular contractor that is the apparent successful bidder also did a similar tank, uh, the large mm -hmm. tank uh, down in South Jersey and did an excellent job. So we're confident that with uh, this being a critical asset for fire protection and uh, uh, for our citizens as it relates to drought and buffering during high irrigation periods that uh, the, the project will go well. Thank you for the clarity. You're welcome. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to address the council, please? Please, your name and address for our records. Uh, Chrissy Skirby, 21 Preakness Drive. Um, I just want to uh, make a comment, too, on the resolution uh, this evening um, that's going to the Board of, uh, or League of Municipalities for impact fees. Um, while it's great to try to get support from other municipalities, what we really need to be doing is pushing our legislators to write a bill for this. Until that happens, as Dr. Parab said, we have many community members that will go down to Trenton. I myself testified um, at the budget hearings this year in Trenton and asked them to consider uh, more appropriations so that we could bring full day kindergarten to our town. Um, we really need to address our legislators who represent us. And while I think this is a great step, I think you should also consider a resolution directly to Senator Greenstein um, uh, and the other uh, legislators that represent us um, in Monroe. You know, the Board of Education did recently um, do a resolution, them too, they did it to New Jersey school boards. Those are other organizations that cannot write laws. We need to be going after our legislators that can actually write a law and then forming groups within our town of residents to go and testify for these to be passed. Um, the one other thing on here, um, 08-2024-019, um, that's the bond ordinance for James Monroe Park facility. I had some questions. I want to thank Mr. Weinberg um, for taking the time to um, give me a call and answer some of my questions. I just want to make sure um, that we're clear. This is for. Um, uh, it's going to be a practice facility at the James Monroe Park location, but it's not going to be just for baseball. Um, it's going to be for other sports as well, and um, it will be a, a cost that the township is incurring, um, whereby there were rumors that um, Monroe Township Baseball Association would have to pay back uh, the township for the bond, but Mr. Weinberg explained to me that's not true, that that will be something that is um, for free use to the township um, through the rec center. Um, is that, if that's correct? I'm happy to answer that. Please. Yes, that is correct. Just to clarify one thing even further, um, while the facility, like all the facilities around the town, whether it be at, you know, uh, with the Wolverines or the soccer complex, while it'll be located at James Monroe Park, um, baseball will have sort of first use of it because it'll be inside their complex. But every moment that it's not being used by baseball, it's our hope to use it by softball and a variety of other sports as well. Um, so it'll be constantly used by the Monroe Rec Department and run, run by them um, as all our facilities generally are. That's great. And, and I know when we were talking, I had mentioned even possibly if the rec department could um, reach out maybe to the school district and have their sports teams use that, because I know right now our parents at the high school um, pay for winter workouts outside of Monroe Township for softball and, and for baseball. So that's something that would be great if we could partner um, with them as well. And then just a question, do, I know we talked about trees too. Do we know ap approximately how many trees we're gonna be cutting down at that location? Um, I, Council President, I, I, and Mar just, I could defer to Mark. I don't no, think we have that number at, that, at this point, but it's a much smaller area than the original amount of trees that were removed for the entire park itself okay. for the baseball field. And the parking lot will be expanded as well to accommodate. We're, we're looking. Uh, we're looking to see what we need to do to make sure it all works together um, collectively. Yes. 
All part right. of the design process. Great, thank you. You're welcome. And we're now switching to address the council. Yes, sir. And please your name and address for our records and there's a five limit time, five minute time limit. Sure. This is my first time for well, speaking in front, so uh, <laughs> Oliver Mangione for Butternut Lane. Um, I am a parent of children in Monroe. I um, am also a coach at the baseball fields, and I am also the treasurer at with the Monroe Township Baseball Association. I'm here to say thank you for all the work that's been done to put this bond ordinance to a second reading. Not sure procedurally about all that, but we appreciate that as an organization. Um, I, I appreciate the questions as well. Um, as a parent that's paid for winter workouts year over year, it's definitely a savings for our players. Um, it's also an additional benefit in that they will be able to practice more, um, become better uh, athletes, better people, um, hopefully, with by learning sport. Um, and it's really something that's going to benefit the overall organization. Um, my children really enjoy going to the baseball field. Uh, my daughter's at practice right now, but she just watches. She enjoys playing at the facility. So it's really a great benefit to the overall township. Um, I also appreciate the consideration for other sports. You know, as, as a member of the board, um, I appreciate we get first use, but also appreciate that my daughters might be able to use that for other activities, either softball or, um, or cheerleading. So I know this is a big um, facility for baseball. It's been a while since we've added something there. Um, so thank you for everything you guys have done there, and we really appreciate it. Thank you for coming. We appreciate your coming. Anyone else wishing to address us? Sir. Your name and address for our records, please. <clears throat> uh, Frank Giuliano, 23 New Street. Um, I uh, moved here in uh, 2007 with my wife, and we've been uh, raising our three children, three boys, um, 14, 11, and 7. And um, I've been very involved with the uh, different rec programs here in Monroe um, and uh, currently serve on the board for the, uh, the, the Monroe Baseball Association um, and really come to just thank you. Um, you guys have done a phenomenal job supporting the rec programs. Uh, when I first moved to Monroe, it was, uh, oh, you're going there to retire. It was, <laughs> it was a lot about the, uh, you know, the senior citizens and all the great stuff you guys do. But uh, you guys also have done a phenomenal job supporting uh, the rec and, and all the kid programs that we have. Um, I would just like to add comment and, and add on. Um, this Monroe Park uh, practice facility is something that has been desperately needed. Uh, with the 10 years I've been uh, part of the program, um, this is a lot of out of cost expense to our citizens um, because this is something that, you know, the town has not been able to offer. And uh, this is something that will definitely be used and needed. Um, and I thank all of you for, for considering this. Um, this was something that was, you know, since I got involved in the, in the Baseball Association, something that we've wanted for a long time and felt like the town needed. Um, and finally, um, somebody stepped up and, and, and got the ball rolling in. And I'd just like to say thank you for that. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to address the council? Please come forward now. Seeing and hearing none, may I have a motion to close the public comment section, please? Motion. Thank you. May I have a second on second. that? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? May I have a motion to adjourn the agenda meeting, please? Motion. Second. Roll call, please. Councilman DePiro? Yes. Councilman Markell? Yes. Councilwoman Siegel? Yes. Council Vice President Vanzora? Yes. Council President Cohen? Yes. Meeting is adjourned at? The time is 713. Thank you. Going to call the regular meeting to order, please. May I have a motion? So motion. Thank you. Second. Second. Thank you. Roll call. Councilman DePiro? Yes. Councilman Markell? Yes. Councilwoman Siegel? Yes. Council Vice President Vanzora? Yes. Council President Cohen? Yes. 
May I have a motion to approve the payment of claims per the run date of August 28th, 2024. Motion, so, please. So moved. Thank you. Second. Second. Roll call. Councilman DePiro. Abstain. Councilman Markell. Yes. Councilwoman Siegel. Yes. Council Vice President Van Zora. Yes. Council President Cohen. Yes, may motion I Motion carries. May I motion to approve the minutes of the following meetings as written and presented August 5th, 2024. Agenda and combined regular meeting. Motion, please. Motion. Second. Second. Thank you. Roll call. Councilman DePiro. Yes. Councilman Markell. Councilwoman Siegel. Yes. Council Vice President Van Zora. Yes. Council President Cohen. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Item four is the ordinance for second reading 08-2024-015. It's an ordinance amending chapter 39 of the code of the township of Monroe entitled fees. I'd like a motion to open the public hearing. Motion. May I have a second, please? Second. Thank you. Anyone wishing to address the council regarding this ordinance, please come up now. Seeing and hearing none, I'd like a motion to close the public hearing. Motion. Thank you. Mo second on that, please. Second. Thank you. May I have an, a motion to adopt this ordinance? So moved. Thank you, sir. Second. May I have second? Second. Thank you. Roll call. Councilman DePiro. Yes. Councilman Markell. Councilwoman Siegel. Yes. Council Vice President Van Zora. Yes. Council President Cohen. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, Madam Motion, President. Yes, please. Uh, if I could be heard with respect to uh, the second reading for ordinance. 0-8-2024-016. I would make a motion at this time uh, to table this to our next meeting of October 7th, 2024. Uh, the reason being this pertains to uh, uh, an item that also needs planning board approval and we did not have our uh, planning board meeting in August we do expect to have our September meeting of the planning board after that we would be in a position for the October 7th meeting to vote on this may I have a second on that motion to table please second thank you need to take a vote. Roll call. I uh, need a motion to take Motion to table. Yeah, yes. A, motion to vote. table this. We need to vote. We have a motion and a second. Table, table it. Table Will the table. clerk call the roll, please? Councilman DePiro. Yes. Councilman Markell. Yes. Councilwoman Siegel. Yes. Council Vice President Van Zora. Yes. Council President Cohen. Yes. Motion so, carries. Thank you. So 08 2024 016 is tabled till the planning board meets and sees this. 08-2024-017 is an ordinance of the Township of Monroe County of Middlesex and State of New Jersey establishing a mid-block crosswalk on Applegarth Road, County Route 619, Township of Monroe, County of Middlesex, State of New Jersey. I'd like a motion to open the public hearing on this ordinance, please. So moved. Thank you. May I have a second on that, please? Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? No. Anyone wishing to address the council about this, please come forward now. Seeing and hearing none, I am going to ask for a motion to close the public hearing. Motion. Thank you. May I have a second on second. that? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No opposition? May I have a motion to adopt 08-2024-017, please? So moved. Thank you, sir. Second. 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 Good. Roll call, please. Councilman DePiro. Yes. Councilman Markell. Yes. Councilwoman Siegel. Yes. Council Vice President Van Zora. Yes. Council President Cohen. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. 08-2024-018, ordinance amending chapter 35 of the code of the township of Monroe entitled drug-free zones. We are updating a code to include the last map revision. Uh, may I have a motion to open a public hearing? Motion. Thank you. May I have a second on that? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 No opposition. Anyone from the public wishing to address us regarding this ordinance, please come forward now. Seeing and hearing none, I'll take a motion to close the public hearing. Motion. Thank you. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No opposition. 
I'd like a motion to adopt 08 2024-018, please. Motion. Thank you. May I have a second? Second. second. Thank you. Two voices at the same time. Do we have a roll call, please? Councilman DePiro. Yes. Councilman Markell. Yes. Councilwoman Siegel. Yes. Council Vice President Van Zora. Yes. Council President Cohen. Thank you. Motion carries. So we, we have moved to 08-2024-019 is a bond ordinance providing for facility improvement on township open space property in and by the township of Monroe in the county of Middlesex, New Jersey appropriating two million nine hundred twenty five thousand three therefore dollars therefore and authorizing the issuance of one million three hundred ninety seven thousand six hundred dollars in bonds bonds or notes of the township to finance part of the costs thereof i'd like a motion to open the public hearing so moved second on there please second all in favor Aye. no opposition Anyone wishing to address the council about this, please come forward now. Seeing and hearing none, may I have a motion to close the public hearing? Motion. Thank you. A second, please. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No opposition. May I have a motion to adopt 08 2024 019? Motion. motion. Again, the chorus. May I have a second on there, please? Second. Roll call? Councilman DePiro. Yes. Councilman Markell. Yes. Councilwoman Siegel. Yes. Council Vice President Van Zora. Yes. Council President Cohen. Motion adopted. Yes. Motion carries. Motion carries. 08 2024-020 is a bond ordinance providing for various improvements to the water sewer utility in and by the Township of Monroe in the County of Middlesex, New Jersey, appropriating four million nine hundred ninety five thousand dollars therefore and authorizing the issue issuance of four million nine hundred ninety five thousand dollars in bonds or notes of the township to finance part of the costs thereof may I have a motion to open a public hearing please so moved thank you is there a second on that second all in favor aye, aye. no opposition any none anyone wishing to address the council on this Ordinance, please come forward now. Seeing and hearing none, a motion to close, please. Motion. Thank you. May I have a second? Second. Thank you. Roll call, please. Right there. We need a motion to adopt. Thanks. Yes. Motion to adopt. Motion to adopt, please. So Mo moved. Thanks. Motion. And we're getting on both sides. This is a second on that. Second. May I have a roll call, please? Councilman DePiro. Yes. Councilman Markell. Yes. Councilwoman Siegel. Yes. Council Vice President Van Zora. Yes. Council President Cohen. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Yes. I asked the public yes. and they didn't come up. Yes. Yes. No. It's, it's, sir, you, you can't, you, you, you're in the middle of a meeting, you can't just start to talk. Thanks. You can wait until we get to the public comment yeah, section at the comment end of the it. meeting. And then you'll be part of the record, which is at, at the end of the meeting. That'll be fine, and it'll be in the record. You're welcome. Ordinance 08-2024-021, bond ordinance providing for various capital improvements in and by the Township of Monroe in the County of Middlesex, New Jersey, appropriating $4,224,400, <laughs> therefore, and authorizing the issuance of 3523300 bonds or notes of the Township to finance part of the cost thereof. Any, and I have a motion to open a public hearing, please. So moved. Thank you. May I have a second, second. on that? All in favor? Aye. Aye. No opposition. Anyone wishing to address us regarding this ordinance, please come forward now. Seeing and hearing none, a motion to close public hearing, please. So moved. Thank you. A second on that. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? May I have a motion to adopt 08 2024 dash 021. 021. Motion. So moved. Second. Thank you. Second. Roll call, please. 
Councilman DePiro. Yes. Councilman Markell. Yes. Councilwoman Siegel. Yes. Council Vice President Van Zora. Yes. Council President Cohen. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Ordinance 08-2024-022, an ordinance authorizing the Township of Monroe to acquire a right-of-way dedication over property at 45 Lower Machaponics Road, known as Block 68, Lot 41.29, a 10-foot wide street tree easement at 43, 45, and 47 Lower Machaponics Road, known as Block 68, Lots 41.34, 41.35, 41.36, and a conservation easement at 43, 45, and 47 Lower Machaponics Road, known as Block 68, Lots 41.34, 41.35, 41.36, on the Township of Monroe tax map. May I have a motion to open a public hearing? Motion. May I have a second on that, please? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No opposition? Anyone from the public wishing to address us regarding this <laughs> ordinance, please come forward now. <coughs> Seeing and hearing none, a motion to close the public hearing, please. So moved. Thank you. Second, please. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? May I have a motion to adopt 08-2024-022, please? Motion. Thank you. May I have a second on that? Second. Thank you. Roll call, please. Councilman DePiro. Abstain. Councilman Markell. Yes. Councilwoman Siegel. Yes. Council Vice President Van Zora. Yes. Council President Cohen. Yes. Motion carries. Yes. Ordinance 08-2024-023, an ordinance authorizing the Township of Monroe to acquire a 10-foot wide tree easement 38 at 38 Avenue I and 40 Avenue I, known as Block 123, lots 11.01 and 14.01 on the Township of Monroe tax map. Thank you. May I have a motion to open a public hearing, please? So moved. Second on that motion. Please. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Anyone from the public wishing to address us on this ordinance, please come forward now. Seeing and hearing none, a motion to close the public hearing. Motion. Thank you. Second. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No opposition. May I have a motion to adopt 08-2024-023, please? So moved. Thank you. And a second on that motion. Second. Thank you. Roll call. Councilman DePiro. Yes. Councilman Markell. Yes. Councilwoman Siegel. Yes. Council Vice President Van Zora. Yes. Council President Cohen. Yes. Motion carries. We're moving to the resolution resolutions for consideration under the consent agenda they are r9-2024-196 through r9-2024-216 accenting what with the exceptions of r9 2024 211 212 and 214 which will be considered separately may i have a motion motion thank you may i have a second on that motion second thank you a roll call please Councilman DePiro. Yes. Councilman Markell. Yes. Councilwoman Siegel. Yes. Council Vice President Van Zora. Yes. Council President Cohen. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. We move to item seven, which is resolutions removed from the consent agenda. May I have a motion to? to this is for resolution R9 2024 211, 212, and 214. We're unclear on which ones. Motion, please. So moved. Thank you. A second. Second. Thank you again. A roll call. <coughs> Councilman DePiro. Stay. Councilman Markell. Yes. Councilwoman Siegel. Yes. Council Vice President Van Zora. Yes. Council President Cohen. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you very much, all of you. We will now move to the our reports, beginning with our business administrator, please. Sure. Thank you, uh, Council President. Just a, a few brief comments on some of the agenda items. Uh, one, uh, certainly pleased to see the Inwood Estates paving moving forward with almost 50% grants um, for that item, which is on the end of the resolution list. That includes $248,000 in a state grant for local aid, $167,000 federal grant for HCD. So the grants are totaling close to 415. Um, also nine bids for that project, which is really good. And we were under the engineer's estimate. so. Thanks to Mr. Razumowitz as well. A couple other items that were particularly important on tonight's agenda. 
um, mentioned earlier and I commented on and I thank Joe, the upgrade and rehabilitation of the Applegarth water tank on Joan Warren Way, very important project. Um, the uh, replacement in one of our bonds there of a 1993 utility vac truck that has served for 31 years. Um, so we certainly got some good use out of that and we'll be no, Joe is looking forward to a new one. Um, we're setting in place the funding for another uh, state grant for uh, Lynx Drive paving. Um, we received a $551,000 state grant um, as part of that project, which will cover uh, well over 50%. So we have that in place. Um, and we also have, um, we also approved tonight um, a new ambulance, um, continuing to try and keep our fleet um, in place. It actually takes quite a while to get an ambulance from when you order now. It's uh, close to two years with supply chain issues. So um, this is actually one that'll probably come about two years from now with, to replace an ambulance that's still working but is 15 years old already. So we're continuing to try and keep our, our fleet updated. Um, so just wanted to comment on some of those. And then lastly, just as a reminder for the public, the library will be closed on Friday, September 6th for paving. Um, so there'll be a lot of activity in the parking lot. And for safety reasons, we'll just close for that one day. And then the uh, improvements will be completed. So just wanted to remind the public of that. Thank you very much, Council President. You're most welcome. Thank you. Mr. Razumowitz. Thank you, Council <coughs> President. I'll be brief. Um, we're currently doing our 2024 Barrier Street road pavings throughout the town. Uh, we're wrapping that up. As uh, Alan had mentioned, we'll be at the library uh, doing our uh, parking lot on Friday. Uh, and there's uh, three or four other streets that still remain. And uh, Alan also mentioned Inwood Estates. Uh, that project uh, was awarded tonight, so we're going to be looking to get that started as soon as possible. So I anticipate uh, October uh, we'll be out there starting work then. And that's my report. Very good. Thank you. Council report. Oh. With Councilman Shapiro on my right, sir. Oh, thank you very much. Um, after listening to a um, public about the impact fees uh, and also what their mayor uh, sent in a letter, uh, which we did, I believe he did last year also, and the support um, from our Board of Education as well. Uh, last meeting, I requested that we reach out to our, our senator, senator and um, assembly and ask them, invite them here. So I don't know if we need a, like a formal resolution uh, or a request to be on the agenda for next month um, to, to send a notice to them and ask them to come and be in an uh, open forum for, for our residents. Uh, because I, I, was reading, uh, I was reading about Perth Amboy they just received a brand new high school, about 590 square feet. And uh, it's really disheartening to hear um, other communities receiving a um, $290 million payment from the state of New Jersey uh, that, we pay, that we pay those taxes. Everybody in this room pays those taxes uh, for the, to the state. But we received $12 million. So they received $290 million for, for a high school that, that that Board of Education and the residents of that community paid $3 million. So when you, when you do the math and you, and you add it all up, it just doesn't make any sense. So I would ask our council, uh, Lou, and, and, and also my council president, to please put it on the, res on, on the agenda for next month so let's send let's send the letters out and request them to come here and, and meet our meet our residents and explain to us what they can do for us because I did attend the board of education meeting when they were there but the unfortunate thing the public was not allowed to speak uh, because it was a committee meeting uh, not a board meeting where the public was allowed to speak so I'll say it again I mentioned it last meeting I, I would request that we get a letter a formal letter out and the mayor um, and the council supports it on having our legislation here on, on helping Monroe Township. Uh, the um, uh, many things that are going on in our community, and an example, uh, the helmet awareness program that our police are doing for our residents. Uh, I think I think they need to step up. A little bit and maybe have a few uh, meetings with our residents the, the children the parents 
uh, on making the, the children aware. And I don't want to I don't want to sound the type to say, hey, we should take away their scooters and we should take away their skateboards uh, and do all of that. Our mayor made a statement of, of a few months back where they give them a, a certificate for a pizza, slice of pizza and a drink to say, listen, here, here's a program that we're trying to help. Um, we all heard about a resident in our community at four years old that we lost, you know, to a, a tragedy um, that is just disheartening to all of us to even see, hear, or talk about. Uh, very, very difficult to talk about um, losing uh, any loved one in our community. And that, that four-year-old is no longer here. Um, and, and that leads me into another question. How many detention basins does the Township of Monroe or MTUD own that do not have fences around them? I can check into that. I think most of our uh, wet basins, I know you and I worked on a wet basin that you built, um, and I think that has a fence around it. Um, so I, I believe most of the wet basins have fences around them. Um, certainly can double check on that. Yeah, if um, you could, if you could uh, Alan, I'd appreciate that and get that information out because um, even, if it's, even if it's a dry basin, you know, we, I brought this up about the rec center being unfenced in a community of nothing but children in our, in our building. And then uh, w going there during the rain and sending pictures to show how much water or in a dry basin during a rainfall, uh, I, think, I think it's very important that we don't have another tragedy or any tragedy is, at all between the, the, fishing, the fishing, the ice skating, or, or just a child walking into a, a situation. Um, maybe we need to look at all our basins, make sure all our buildings and all our basins are, are fenced properly, not just wet basins, I, I think all basins. So if you can let us know that, I'd appreciate it. Um, and I had a question in reference to open space. I know I requested the um, 2024 activity. Uh, I haven't received it yet, but hopefully I, I will get that soon on the amount that went into our account and from our taxes and, and if we got reimbursements from the state for uh, 405 spots with Gravel Hill. Uh, and also, um, I wanted to know if there's any parcels that we're planning on moving forward in 2024 for open space. Right, so we, we continue, if I could, Council President, um, and I think I did send you that number just to be clear. It's about $1.3 million that comes in each year as part of our open space and recreation trust fund. Um, that, that comes in each year. Our debt service is approximately 800,000, as I put in the email. Certainly we'll get you that uh, back and forth on the open space. Something our open space uh, committee certainly looks at. Obviously we need to have a willing seller. Um, also I would say that there are some targeted properties um, within the uh, master plan that we're continuing to look at as well. Um, but as, as properties come up, they'll either come through the uh, open space uh, and farmland preservation committee or they'll come before this council um, and that's that's basically how it would move forward but we did put together a targeted list um, associated uh, with the master plan we can't as a you know practical matter um, we can't acquire open space by condemnation um, we have to have a property that where somebody would be wanting to sell that property in order for us to really engage on that um, unless there was a public need that was uh, you know, exigent. Right, the two that we purchased, one being the Meadowview Nursing Home on Spots of Gravel Hill and the other one being on 405 Spots of Gravel Hill. Could you give us an update on what's going on with those two parcels? Sure. Um, so in terms of, if I could, Council, Council President, um, as you know, uh, a couple things have happened in the area of, of open space uh, probably within the last two years. Um, in a way that'll, I think, benefit the town and that we've communicated with the residents. Um, first, um, in looking at uh, Meadowview, our opportunity there was to purchase a property that um, 
will help us um, associated with the next round of affordable housing. And so the goal there, as I've mentioned previously at the meetings, is to make that part of a future round of affordable housing where you'd have senior affordable in it, um, and that will help us meet our affordable housing obligation. Obviously, every, everything we can do to build our own affordable housing prevents that four to one ratio um, that the state has generally um, implied on all 360 municipalities that are subject to, to the settlement. Um, so that'll be part of our round four affordable housing. Um, in terms of Garvey's, uh, Mark can probably give you an update on the demolition related to that. Um, but as you know, we, we got a million dollar grant from the county, which we should get shortly. And I believe we have a 300 or two or three hundred thousand dollar grant from the state for that as well. So the majority of that is through grant funds um, as well. And as we put into uh, as we put into the newspaper, um, we're moving forward on the acquisition of the Barnes property, um, which will be fully funded through state and county grants. And hopefully, we'll be executing that shortly, um, which we're super excited about as well. That'll be a two and a half million dollar grant from the state. Um, and a, uh, a $1.8 million grant from, uh, sorry, $2.3 million, million from the state and a $2 million grant from the county. So I apologize. Oh, thank you. So also um, we, we've been talking about uh, truck traffic and situations going on. I know in the past uh, we talked about looking for DOT to do an approval on Applegarth Road uh, Cranberry Union Valley and Prospect Plains. I know the county signed off on it and they approved it. Are there any updates from NJDOT for for making a weight limit on these or local local deliveries only? Are there anything in the works that's coming from sure. NJDOT? Sure, and this is uh, this was something that was in the Monroe News. I think the episode, the uh, issue beforehand. Um, so a couple things are happening, and there's a full report uh, linked online in terms of the Southern Middlesex uh, freight study. A lot of really positive feedback from that. Um, as you recall, and as we've spoken about before, um, one of the challenges with trying to get the uh, uh, the, the uh, weight, uh, weight restrictions on the east-west connectors, where people were coming, uh, you know, in that in that direction, um, was that they wanted a more further study. And so, what's great about uh, the, uh, the study that was done, the truck study that was done, is that it did uh, make a recommendation in there, um, particularly on Cranberry Station Road, that uh, one could move forward in a, in, a, in, a, in a way where you wouldn't have to do any significant work to move that towards uh, being, uh, to being weight restricted. The other two would require some additional capital projects on the east-west connectors being Half Acre Road and Prospect Plains. So as a result of that, and I spoke with the county about it, they'll be implementing uh, those programs. First and foremost, they'll be doing some of the different wayfinding efforts that you'll start to see going up um, in the coming year. Again, there's, a, there's if you look at the report that was issued, and I think it was shared with you, um, there are different phases to this. So I'm gonna talk about uh, the, the near-term phase that was listed in the report. As you recall, there's different phases in the report. So wayfinding and working with the, uh, with the uh, providers of, of, uh, of GIS and mapping are some of the first things that are happening. Um, we'll also be moving forward with our own uh, report on weight limits related to Cranberry Station Road that we can send to the state, which will buttress the state report, and then we'll be able to have that backup. Uh, back but there's uh, several other inter interim items that are in there as well beyond wayfinding and that one thing, and be happy to go through it uh, at a different time as well. Uh, thank you. If you could pass uh, to our chief of police, if he can do a truck stops on these roads and help with the weights and measures with the, uh, the state police and also the uh, county, it would probably be helpful because a lot of these trucks are, that are driving through our town are unsafe. Uh, and they need sh they need to be checked with weight and also with the safety. So if you could check with our chief of police, I'd, I'd appreciate that, uh, Alan. Um, on on the paving, I, I appreciate the report, Mark. But I had a question, uh, mainly to mainly to M. Tud, um, our director Joe. It's very important that that we get a video before the paving starts and also after the, the paving to make sure that they don't pave over any of our our valves and over our manholes and, and that after the paving is done that each one of our valves are functioning and there's no asphalt in catch basins or asphalt in the valve. So when you guys go out in the middle of the night on a water main break, you go and you find out that the valve 
is full of asphalt that was paved at previous time. So are we checking all of the, the paving prior and then are we checking all the valves and to make sure all the manholes are still still there without being paved around it? Is there somebody from MTUD doing that currently? Council President, if I could. Oh, you want to get the Excellent question, uh, Councilman. And uh, we do do that. Uh, we. Uh, we obviously mark out the, uh, the assets before the paving project starts, and then we go back after the paving project is completed and check it. And uh, in fact, uh, our, uh, you know, the fire chief is actually our, uh, our markout expert, and he goes out there and personally does that. So we're, we're very confident that we're working not only collectively with engineering and the uh, contractor, but within MTUD to make sure that that uh, responsibility is upheld and taken care of. Thank you. You're welcome. And, and uh, I had a question and a comment also about Mounts, Mounts Mill, Old Bridge, English Town. I noticed that they're out there finally doing the electrical work for the traffic signal. Um, and I noticed the fire hydrant got moved. That was in the way uh, for the contractor. That just got, got moved as well. Um, so. It looks like hopefully the contractor can go out there and, and make it a, all the telephone poles removed. Uh, thank you to JCP now finally. But hopefully they can get that buttoned up where from curb to curb we can get we can get at least stabilized base, um, you know, where it's a little safer for our residents to uh, travel. Um, but are there any updates on Prospect Plains and Applegarth intersection? Council President, um, with regard to uh, Applegarth and Prospect Plains, if you recall, the county project includes the intersection and then uh, all of Prospect Plains to the municipal border. Uh, the, the township has acquired uh, all the easements that were necessary to, to, to do that project with the exception of the railroad. Uh, at the railroad crossing, um, the easements, uh, there, there's been communications with Conrail, with the county and the state and the township, and, and, um, and the stumbling block there is, is really the railroad and, and getting that uh, approved. So the county now has reached out to the DOT to uh, amend the project, to do it in two phases, uh, to get the intersection completed up to the railroad tracks, and then once uh, everything is resolved with the railroad, get that easement then put out the rest of the project to the municipal border as a phase two but but it looks like it'll be it, it'll take many more months to get those easements through the railroad so we're trying to uh, accelerate the project um, because the intersection is the most important part of, of this project so uh, so that that's where it's at right now it's at the state they're reviewing um, that to uh, make a determination uh, uh, to allow the county to move forward but with phase one thank thank you mark um, Avenue K in Garibaldi Avenue, we have a lock uh, gate um, that a resident keeps calling me in reference to the getting some graffiti on their fence. They contacted the police. They did a police report. I know that we discussed it last week that there was a, a I believe, um, a pending um, lawsuit that was withdrawn, I believe, uh, for use variance. And now that uh, we own the we own that right away the town put the gate up are, are we going to keep that gate locked I'd have to your mic's off i'd have to look into that i know this is of uh concern to you um in terms of access um brought it up several times i think we were successful in the zoning board and i mean the zoning board was successful in defending itself which will prevent the use but i would really have to talk further with the utility director um and the and the planning director to make sure I answer the uh, question correctly. Well, we did pay. It is our property, and we have we spent the money. The taxpayers spent the money. I, I just like to see the gate locked uh, because there are residents going there that are vandalizing people's property, and they did do police reports. And I got I received a call on Tuesday about it as well from from a few homeowners. I wanted to point out as the liaison for the shade tree. Um, I requested many times that we notify Middlesex County uh, Highway Roads and Bridges and 
and they need to maintain the dead branches that, that are over a lot of our township roads. Example, Prineville Road, Machaponics. Um, we have township roads such as Federal that have a lot of dead trees. So a resident called me that um, he was driving down Machaponics, the tree fell down, and, and a, dead tree, a dead tree limb uh, damaged his truck. The road got closed uh, during, during um, I guess during an operation where there was no wind or there was no uh, storm, and the tree just fell, a branch fell and, and damaged his truck. So if we could reach out to Middlesex County uh, and ask them to look at a lot of the dead trees, Primeville Road, if you drive up and down it, you can still see leaves on, and you'll see the dead branches. It's easy to pick them out now, but in another month or two, it might not be so easy, and we don't want our residents just driving by with a branch falling. So if we could reach out to the county on that, I'd appreciate it. Um, as the chairman of the New Jersey Training School Citizens Review, uh, along with, uh, with Terry and Alan, um, our meeting is September 11th in this room at 6.30. It's open to the public, and uh, if anybody would like to attend, I just wanted to, to point that out. Uh, it's on 9-11 at, at 6.30. And, uh, also on 9-11 at our, our tree park at 8.30 a.m., I believe it's 8.30 a.m. start time, that we're going to be at the uh, memorial and at the, the tree park on Prospect Plains. So I just wanted to mention that to the, to the residents as well. And on 9-21-24, I'm on the green team as well at 10 o'clock to 3 o'clock. Uh, Green Fair is at the high school. I want our residents to know um, to come out and support and also uh, see all the uh, vendors that are there and also to, uh, to help, our, help our community with the green, uh, the green team. I had a question. We talked about uh, water towers. What's our plan for the water tower on 522? Thanks. Uh, Joe, if you could explain that again to the councilman, the 522 water tower. The 522 water tower. We talked about raising it. We talked yep. about you could doing different, painting it. Just the same update. Thanks. Uh, currently, there is a, uh, a study underway, councilman, uh, to do some geotechnical work. Uh, obviously, you know that if we do raise the tank up to facilitate additional storage that's required, to operate the distribution system correctly, we have to make sure that the uh, surrounding uh, ground will be able to hold that additional weight. So once that's done, uh, then we will proceed with the actual design of uh, raising the tank and then painting it. All right, I just also wanted to point out, um, we talked about a water tower possibly <coughs> over by the state home, possibly on, in the Pines development. There is, a, there is a water tower on the state property right now. Um, so I don't know if that's something that, that we could reach out when we have our meeting on 9-11. On it's a question that I'm going to bring to them is there is a water tower there. I don't know if you're familiar with that, Joe, um, or if you can get familiar with it and help educate us a little bit about it. Um, we know they, they abandoned their, their sewer plant that they had and they're still going on with that. But if, the, if you go look into the water tower that's there, and it's something that the town, um, you know, we could benefit from, uh, because they are talking about, uh, they've been talking about the premises of leaving and, and closing, but if there's a water tower there and it's something that we could use, it, I just think that we, should, we need to look into. That's an excellent question. We already have. Uh, we've done a hydraulic analysis to actually see whether or not that would benefit. We also did a little study on how old that water tower is and the cost it would uh, take to refurbish it. Uh, and uh, right now, uh, economically, it really is not feasible for us to use. And that's one of the reasons why we decided to go back to 522 tank. We looked at about oh, five or six areas throughout the township that would actually benefit us and where we could potentially put an additional tank, but uh, none of them fit better than the existing location at 522. Okay, thank you. That, well, that's all I have, Council President. Thank you. Yes, fresh back from vacation. I head first. Um, I'm going to make this short. I just want to reiterate uh, my congratulations to the Senior Center, which I'm uh, 
part of the commission for. As you know, they do such a great job. And I want to just uh, add that um, I'm a big baseball fan. So the baseball facility, uh, I jumped in to uh, make the motion because I want to be on record to uh, make the motion to go forward with that that uh, facility I think it's great for the kids um, anything we can do for our, the citizens in this town to uh, improve the uh, recreation or arts or anything is is very important um, I also like to say uh, just mention um, what happened in Georgia today in the schools um, I just want to make sure that uh, we know that the schools the kids are safe in uh, Monroe you have to be well aware everybody seems to be separated until it happens to you um, but it could happen anywhere and we should all be aware at least in the council and everybody um, and one other thing I would just like to um, send out my condolences to the family that uh, lost their four-year-old uh, child um, I was uh, very close to a family many years ago that lost a child so I'm pretty well aware of um, I don't know the feelings because I've never lost a child but I'm well aware of the problems that they're going to go through and I um, I hope they do well on anything as as a town we should all just recognize as as citizens of Monroe that uh, we have our condolences for them uh, that's really all I want to say tonight thank you Thank you, Council President. So I too, along with my fellow councilmen, um, offer my condolences to the family who lost their child this week with the drowning. Um, deepest condolences to that family. Um, I did want to share, I wanted to welcome the Wine Locker, one of our new businesses in Monroe, wish them all the best. We had a ribbon cutting ceremony for them. They're located in the Gables Shopping Center on Applegarth Road. And I want to send a huge thank you to all the department organizations or department teams in our township who participated in National Night Out. It was a wonderful night, great crowds, lots of great information. It was one of those summer nights that you want to bottle and save for one of those cold days in winter. Um, and you know, lots of great information was provided. And if you could throw a baseball, you could try to dunk a police officer or even the chief. So it was a great night. Um, and I want to share, I, I'm on a distribution list for Sustainable New Jersey, and I recently got an email from them recognizing Joe Slomian, um, our recycling coordinator at DPW, being recognized as a sustainability hero by Sustainable New Jersey. And I want to just share a short piece of what was written in this article, because it was really nice to open my email and see this, but for over 25 years, Joe Slomian has served the Township of Monroe as the Recycling and Clean Communities Coordinator and as a member of the Environmental Commission and Green Team Advisory Committee. Through his incredible drive and innovative spirit, Joe secured funding that helped him optimize Monroe Township's recycling and environmental stewardship initiatives. Monroe Township has consistently ranked as one of the top municipalities in the state and litter prevention and achieves an impressive 65% recycling rate due to Joe's effort. So I just want to recognize and congratulate Joe and what an honor uh, that he's part of our DPW team. With silver uh, from League of Municipalities, yet again, we have been recertified. And just a couple other things I want, want to point out. I know summer months are over, but the township always has so many events. And I just want to highlight a couple that are coming up in September. I know we've already, we, Councilman DePierre mentioned about the 9-11 Remembrance Ceremony, but we had Beatlemania coming up on September 15th at 4 p.m. at the high school. Tickets are on sale. And our vintage baseball game is coming up on September 21st at Dye Farm from 12 to 3.30. So mark your calendars for that. And I just wanted to, since I mentioned Councilwoman Schneider earlier, I know there's a Taste of Monroe event on September 19th, and we're starting to collect donations for the food pantry, which was always something that she was very passionate about, was insecurity around food and making sure people had food to eat. Um, so please come join us. It's on September 19th. 
at the Senior Center, and please donate if you're able to. So, and that concludes my report. Council Vice President Van Zurf, please. Thank you, Madam President. When you go last, most of the people have already brought up things that I had mentioned Thank to talk you. about, but um, next to last, actually. Yeah, thank you. Um, a couple of things. Last month, there were many, many good events around town, which are part of what makes Monroe uh, the great town that it is. Um, they, they had the, the Day Farm uh, event at the historic house. Uh, I wanted to point out Monroe Senior Softball League uh, sponsored a pitch for the cure for prostate cancer, which was a, uh, something that they've done over the past few years. Um, I, I was a little, a little under the weather this month, so I didn't get to many of the activities, but the, the fact that they have these things and, and they're all good stuff for the town, I, I thought was great. Um, I'm also the uh, liaison to the, uh, the rec advisory committee, and I, I feel very happy and very uh, uh, blessed that we were able to get the uh, uh, practice facility for the for the baseball teams. Um, I had a, a daughter who was a pitcher for the softball team and, and also played rec and travel and I know what it's like to try and get out there just to get the practice facilities for the winter workouts is crazy and then to, when you have the facility the, the cost of running it gets to be quite expensive and a lot of times you know uh, if the parents wind up chipping in on their own. So for the town to provide that, I think it's a great thing. And it'll be good because others, just besides baseball, could also use it. And I, I think it'll just be a wonderful thing. It doesn't mean that we're still not committed to addressing other things in town with uh, recreational facilities, but this is something that, from what I understand, was pretty much long overdue. Um, just want to remind everyone the farmers market will be continuing through the end of the month I understand at the library Thursdays 2:30 to 6 30 um, September the 9th there's going to be a Department of Motor Vehicle or Motor Vehicle Commission it's going to have a mobile unit there so if people need to get their license or registration renewed um, you could do it there instead of having to travel somewhere but you do need to make an appointment so just don't show up because then if you get turned down um, I'm sure it'll be a little bit upsetting um, we do have our, our annual 9-11 uh, memorial which I know is special for the mayor and uh, always try and make our best effort to attend that it is hard to believe that it's now 23 years since 9-11 and it seems like yesterday when we were watching on TV when that happened. Um, some of these things just stick in your mind. Um, the four-year-old child, I have two kids of my own, so my kids are much older now, but I think anybody that's a parent can relate to that and the, the dread and the fear and then the realization as to what occurred. So um, thoughts go out to that family. And in that same regard, what happened today down in Georgia with the shooting, it's just... Uh, breaks my heart every time I see that I uh, probably the thing that got me most interested in politics uh, we go back to Columbine many many years ago and I remember that but I didn't know anybody out there and I mean I looked at it well that's really bad but then when they had the the young children the, the first graders in Connecticut that all got shot that just totally blew me away where they, they couldn't even identify the kids um, because it was so bad and ever since then, I've been a pretty strong advocate. Sensible gun laws is what we need. Doesn't have to mean that if you're a hunter, you can't have a gun or you can't have anything, but universal background checks. Um, we don't need uh, machine guns. We don't need uh, those type of weapons. We really don't need to bump stock either, although I understand it's been ruled legal. Um, but. Uh, we just need to do common sense. And the, and the other one I almost forgot is the red flag laws. When a family sees somebody and they know that the person's off a little bit, we all know what we're talking about, and they start talking crazy, well, protect it, you know, protect them against themselves too. Uh, so those are all things that can be addressed, and I hope that uh, maybe it will get addressed later in the year, the next legislative session. And lastly, I'm um, not going to talk long on it, but Ukraine war continues. Uh, I hope we continue to give our support to the people of Ukraine who were uh, 
really up against it lately. So having said all that stuff, uh, fall season's here. Kids are back in school. Be careful with the school buses and kids running around and everything. And uh, let's hope we have a, a safe and uh, a, a great school year coming up. So thank you, Madam President. Thank you. can be taught. Uh, before I turn this over to the mayor, we all know how we feel, each and every one of us, that that little boy died, little child died. You're not supposed to bury your children, they're supposed to bury you. So we can all just hope and pray that we don't have any further incidents like that in our town and in other places as well. And we'd also like to add my voice to my colleagues who say, please come to 9-11 if you can. It is a lovely, lovely ceremony. There are parents there and wives and husbands who, who lost family then. So I think that the solidarity of people around you helps sometimes. So it would be good if your schedule allows you to get there, to get there would be appreciated. Mr. Mayor, you came back from vacation a few weeks ago, so you're already back in school modes. Classes started at Rutgers. It was a couple months ago. Uh, a couple of months ago in your head. You know. <laughs> so please, the, give Madam, us your report. Madam Thank Council you. President, thank you for uh, providing me a little bit of time just to um, report. Um, did I hear correct, correctly 31 years uh, vehicle? 31 years. Joe, was that your vehicle? Was it like the Flintstones? Were you using your feet? To so, for you know, we give proclamations for people. Can we give a proclamation to a vehicle for 31 years? Um, joking aside, just jumping in here, some events that I did attend over the last month. Uh, I did attend the uh, Monroe Township Senior Softball Pitch for Cure event to raise money for prostate cancer awareness to detection and treatment. Uh, on hand was uh, Bob Randall from uh, WFAN, as well as former Major League uh, Baseball player Pete Harnish, uh, as they threw out the first pitch for the, uh, there was a home run derby and then an all-star game. Um, as alluded to before, uh, Councilwoman Siegel had mentioned about the uh, National Night Out. Certainly proud to celebrate with all of our first responders. Uh, as well as our Fire District 1 uh, had their 75th anniversary as well, which was a uh, tremendous event for the community at large. Um, I also want to thank uh, all of those who attended the uh, Mayor's Wellness Meditation event on the 28th. It was a, an amazing turnout, uh, not enough room uh, in, in, in the room, so you know you're always, always uh, successful when that's the case. I also just want to thank uh, the council members for uh, the uh, support and um, uh, for the resolution, for the advocacy, for the um, uh, uh, the the laws uh, in regards to um, having our hands tied uh, to um, um, builders' remedy, builders' fees, all of that stuff. This will be going to the League of Municipalities as well as our legislators as well. So I just wanted to you know, follow up on that. Um, and as for the, uh, for the baseball facility, you know, I, I do. I do know um, I was president of that league 20-something years ago. And that was something that we talked about back then. Um, so it took us took you a while. Thank you for your patience, but it'll certainly come to fruition for not only baseball but all of the sports that can um, take advantage of uh, of such a magnificent uh, facility here in Monroe. Uh, I want to applaud the township um, employees uh, who recently donated to the Arms Wide Open Childhood Cancer Foundation on behalf of the Volpe family. Uh, for your information, September is Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. Um, I also want to just take this moment to extend my condolences to former Councilman Bob Tucker and his family for the loss of the beautiful matriarch of the family, Gloria. Uh, Bob has done a lot for this town, so please uh, think of him um, during this um, time of um, despair. A 9-11 Remembrance Ceremony was mentioned. Uh, on 914, we have a paper shredding at our recycling yard from 8 to 12. Um, uh, Taste of Monroe was mentioned. <laughs> ah, here's one that wasn't. Green Fair, 921, 10 a.m. at our high school. 
And obviously, I do want to just uh, welcome all the students back, all the teachers back, um, it's, as well as cannot emphasize enough to please drive safe. When you see those buses, please slow down and please stop. If they bother you that much, leave earlier or leave later. Do not ride on their tail. Do not pass a bus. Um, and I do want to just finish off, um, lastly, with um, having a heavy heart in regards to the news of the uh, tragic drowning that occurred. Um, certainly as a parent, as a human, I can't imagine a greater pain. Um, I, did, uh, I did call the parents, um, and I did, uh, on behalf of the entire township, the entire community, extend our deepest sympathies and condolences. Um, I also took the opportunity to reach out to all of the first responders there for that very, very tragic event. You can train all you want, but until it happens, you don't know. Um, a lot of the responders had little kids, and it was a very traumatic experience for them. I thank them for their unwavering dedication to their profession. And I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Madam Council President. We're going to move to the public comment section. I'd like a motion to open the public comment section, please. So moved. Thank you. Second, please. All in favor? Aye. Any opposition? No. All right, folks, anyone wishing to address the council, please come forward. The time limit of five minutes is still in force, and your name and address for our records. Gary Busman, 7 Monarch Road. This is uh, just to reiterate 0820-2420 with regard to wording in the bond ordinance. Um, uh, I'm looking out for the township's interest by the wording. I don't want anyone to come back to the municipality to indicate that the bond, and because of the wording in the new proposal, uh, indicates that that is the full amount for the bond at $4,995,000. Uh, I think it's beneficial for the municipality to protect its position and its rights uh, to make sure that the wording in that agreement is adequate. The words that appear now do not appear to be correct. Thank you. You're welcome. Sir, your name and address, please, for our records. Good evening and thank you. Joe Atanasio, 21 Wellington Place, Monroe Township in Greenboyer. Uh, I, now that I'm a member of the Board of Directors of the Whittingham Homeowners Association, it's my duty to come here for, with complaints that I've been getting from a few residents. Uh, the construction at the police precinct, albeit necessary, people have complained to me about the noise level at about 6.45 in the morning. I have not experienced this firsthand, but I just thought I'd bring it here to remind the construction company, if they would, to start at a much reasonable, much more reasonable hour as I have been getting complaints. I will look at this myself in the next, in the next few days to make sure it's, you know, these people are actually telling me factually what's going on. But thank you if you would remind them, I'd appreciate it. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to address the council? Yes. Council President, I'll, I'll look into that with the police station and their start time. The start time should be 7 a.m., not 6.45, so I'll follow Thank up. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. You're walking slowly. Name and address for our records, please. George Gunkelman, 5 Kelly Court, Monroe. Um, I'd like to ask a, a question if, about all the different tax relief programs we have. Um, from the state, you know, that are mostly geared towards relief uh, for seniors and, and, and others for um, property tax. What, if any, uh, impact does that have on our finances? 
is this money that go, comes from the state and, and we're totally, I was pretty sure that was the case, but I wanted to be sure. Yeah, Com the money comes from the, the money comes from the state. Yeah. Correct. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else switching? Yes, please. Again, your name and address for the record, please. Chrissy Scurby, 21 Preakness Drive. I want to thank the council for approving the baseball facility as a baseball family here in Monroe for the last probably 18 years. Um, it's a great addition to there, and I appreciate the efforts of the council in increasing our rec uh, services throughout the town. Um, one thing I just wanted to bring to the council's attention and ask possibly for um, maybe a change going forward. I recently had some work done in my house and we went through um, the permit process through the construction office during uh, which time every so often we had to have um, an inspection the construction um, department would contact my husband or myself and set up an appointment for somebody to come out and do the inspection it worked out fine I always knew when they were coming when they were expected who I, and who I was expecting this week I had um, my doorbell ring and it was somebody from the tax assessor's office, unannounced. I did not really know if they were from the town or not. I was very uncomfortable. Um, I didn't think that it was really a proper way to do things. I reached out to Mr. Weinberg, we had a conversation. He had the woman who heads up the tax assessor's office, maybe the tax assessor herself. Um, she called me and she explained that um, at the tax assessor's office, they don't call the residents ahead of time to schedule because they don't have the phone numbers. I found that really hard to believe that in our town, while the construction department has the phone numbers and contact information for those who put in the permits, the tax assessor's office wouldn't be able to contact a resident. It just made me feel very uncomfortable having somebody unannounced show up at my door and tell me they were from the town and want to come in. Um, uh, you know, it, it was, it's not something that I think our residents should have. I, I think that if the town is coming out to, to um, want to come in, they should call ahead to the residents because there's so much going on in this world and you don't know who is properly coming to your home for something and who's not. There's so many scams and scandals. We have so many um, residents in the adult community. It, it just really would be safer if we could call and make appointments um, so our residents know. And just to comment on the truck traffic on, I think it was um, Applegarth and Prospect Plains, um, we seem to do a lot of talk about that area. Uh, that is a highly traveled county road. The speed limit used to be 50, it might be 50 in the area, 45 miles an hour. Um, if we're doing studies there on, on the trucks, I would really encourage that we also do the studies of trucks going in residential areas. I know that residents came here last month and talked about trucks in residential areas where they want to build a warehouse. Um, they were told that this wasn't the proper forum, they should go to planning. I know they're planning on doing that. But if we're looking at the truck traffic on that road and saying that we need to mitigate that for the residents, we shouldn't be having tractor trailers and trucks going through residential areas where the roads aren't wide enough, where there's a large amount of children waiting on bus stops, having tractor trailers go through residential community really should not be something that this town is looking for. I know the application is before the planning board, but I would ask that the council, when, when looking into truck traffic on that road, is looking at the truck traffic in residential communities as well. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else wishing to address the council? Seeing and hearing none, may I have a motion to close the public comment section, please? May I have a second on that? Second. Thank you. All in favor? Yes. That's sure. done. I just have a comment. I'll go right ahead. Well, close the. I'll close my little, yeah. and then you go ahead before we go to adjournment. Okay. We are closing the public portion. We had a motion to close. All in favor? We have a motion. On it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No opposed? No opposition? Mr. Mayor, Just yes. want to get it out there that, um, as was mentioned earlier, it w we did a, uh, the county did a southern middle six yeah, freight cool. study, yes. so it's looking at the entire, not just not the Applegarth quarter, right. but everyone else. 
Uh, other towns were brought in as well. So I just wanted to get it's it's a larger picture to be um, uh, we're yes. cognizant of. Thank you. Yes, it is. Thank you for that clarification. May I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Motion. May I have a second on that? Roll call. Taking a roll call on adjournment. Councilman DePiro. Yeah. Councilman Markell. Councilwoman Siegel. Yes. Council Vice President Van Zora. Yes. Council President Cohen. Yes, this meeting is adjourned yeah. at 8 8.19 p.m. 8 